So today we're going to make some ethyl acetoacetate via the glycine condensation. Um, glycine condensation implies uh, the reaction between two molecules of ethyl uh, acetate and two molecules of sodium ethoxide to give our desired product. And for this reaction we need some sodium metal that, as you, as you may see, it's a little bit dirty. So we have to clean it first to cut it and then clean it uh, melting it into hot um, mineral oil. There is some shiny sodium as you may expect. So for the next step we have to weight some sodium metal in our balance before we clean it. We need to weight about 2 grams of the sodium metal. 1 gram. and to 138 grams. So that's fine because we have uh, now to melt it and then we will weight it again. So we have here our beaker with the melted sodium on the hot plate and the sodium has already started to melt. Forming kind of spheres at the bottom of the beaker. So we have here our device already mounted and we have here some our reagents, for example the sodium metal, sodium metal beads, the ethyl acetate and finally our condenser uh, and with a, at the top our uh, humidity trap made out of uh, calcium chloride and hydrous. Now we have here uh, our sodium metal beads in some hexanes. This is in order to remove the excess mineral oil. We have two grams of sodium beads. And then we have to add them uh, very quickly um, to our 22.17 milliliters of ethyl acetate. We don't have to worry about immediate reaction. As soon as this is done, and with the steering bar inside the flask, we can now adapt it to the condenser. So this is our reaction, and as you can see, at first nothing happens, just are the beads of sodium just floating around, and then when it reaches a moderately high or a warm temperature, the reaction is going to take up very uh, aggressively, so we have to be prepared with um, a container full of cold water just to control the reaction. So despite we clean the sodium metal uh, carefully, there are still some bits of sodium oxides flowing around. Just as a side note, it's very important that we use some ethyl acetate that is anhydrous or almost anhydrous. The technical grade is, um, uh, most of the times is, is sufficient to do this kind of reaction, but you can't, you can't use, for example, um, ethyl acetate obtained from fissure sterifications because you can't remove all the, all the water in it. Sometimes it's good just to put a little piece of aluminium foil in order to get to help the reaction get started. And as you can see, it is now boiling very vigorously. Next, we need to adjust our heating uh, element in order to get around 60 or 90 degrees centigrade and to keep, in order to keep them boiling at this rate. 
it is very important as a side note to use this kind of uh, condenser or a more efficient one like a Friedrichs in order to avoid losses and now we have to let uh, the reaction uh, proceed at this rate for about one to two hours or um, until the sodium gets dissolved so we have here the mechanism for the glycine condensation in the first part we have our metal sodium that is going to react with ethyl alcohol that is one of the main products of the hydrolysis of ethyl acetate then to form the sodium methoxide sodium methoxide then is going to take one of the protons of a molecule of ethyl acetate there leaving it with a neg negative charge at the alpha carbon to the carbonyl plus ethyl alcohol then in the third part we have a molecule of a negatively charged ethyl acetate that is going to attack another molecule of ethyl acetate this polarizes and then the oxygen uh, return is charged and this leaves this group leaves as sodium methoxide then we have here our sodium methoxide negatively charged that it takes one proton of this molecule and then leaves it with a negative charge plus ethyl alcohol and then in the final steps when we add the acetic acid we have an acid workup in which the molecule of uh, ethyl acetoacetate regains its proton and then we have our final products of the reaction side products that are uh, sodium hydroxide and ethyl alcohol so this is our reaction uh, a couple of hours uh, after two and a half hours after to be precise and we haven't seen the development of uh, orange like orange fluorescence color in the reaction flask um, the metal beads are not completely dissolved and we have to wait for at least a, another hour temperature it's time to add a solution of 50% acetic acid in order to destroy any remaining sodium methoxide and also to separate the product So once the solids have been completely dissolved, we can proceed to the next step. That is, check the pH with some pH papers. Uh, in this case, the reaction is uh, slightly acidic, so we can adjust it just uh, with a tiny amount of solution of sodium bicarbonate until no more bubbling appears. When all the acids have neutralized, we can observe the formation of two layers, in which the upper layer is our desired product. The lower layer is mostly water and uh, acetate salts. So we can now proceed to separate the, the layers. And then we save and drain both layers. And the organic layer we decanted over some calcium chloride. Then we transfer again the aqueous layer to the separation funnel and add approximately 15 milliliters of ether to extract the remaining of the ethyl acetoacetate that stays in solution in the water. Now it's time to distill the dry organic phase. For this, we are going to use a short path apparatus. First, we are going to collect the ether phase at around 30 degrees. Then, when we reach 70, we are going to collect the leftover so ethyl acetate. This is at this point when we need to pull a vacuum in order to get our final product at around 90 to 100 degrees. Now, 
with the vacuum pump connected, we will pull a vacuum of approximately 18 to 30 millimeters of mercury and start distilling until no more liquid is left in the distilling flask, only a tarry residue. After distillation, we are left with a nice oily, pale yellow liquid with a floral kind of fruity smell. We obtained 4,526 grams of our product, which represents a yield of approximately 30% based on the initial quantity of ethyl acetate. Besides its well-known uses in organic chemistry, ethyl acetoacetate can also react with iron to form color complexes. For example, I'm going to show you the reaction between a solution of ethyl acetoacetate and a solution of ferric nitrate. Immediately when the ferric nitrate solution is added, we can see a change in color producing a deep purple or reddish color solution.